The security forces are increasing their operations, targeting guns and gunmen in various communities. I appeal to citizens not to interfere with the police carrying out their lawful duties. Of the forward-facing plan is that the security forces are increasing their operations and targeting of guns and gunmen. And you will see them turning up in communities all over. When you see the police come, don't interfere with them. I have seen too many videos of citizens interfering with the police carrying out their lawful duties. If you interfere with the police in this operation, you too will be arrested. Do not interfere with the police carrying out their lawful duties. You will note that the police have been very professional in the conduct of the operations to recover the guns that they have recovered so far. If you are innocent, you don't have anything to do with it, stay inside your yard. Don't come out and defend what you don't know. Because after the police leave, them same one that you defend turn around and kill you. I know that in some communities, illegal guns are considered a part of life. A part of our culture and unfortunately, many young men don't see them as illegal or even a danger. They see the guns as a means of empowerment while some wise youth choose education as their tool of empowerment and earning respect. We have sit back for decades as the gun culture took over communities and our youths, especially young men. We cannot allow this to continue. We must break this culture that drives our young men to want to acquire illegal guns. These illegal guns are a part of life, a part of our culture, and many, especially our young men, don't see them as illegal or even dangerous. They see the gun as a means of empowerment. While some wise youth choose education as their tool and ticket out of poverty and their tool of empowerment and earning respect, too many of our youth, unfortunately, choose the gun as their route of getting respect and money. With the new policies, laws and capabilities coming into effect, the risk of being involved in any way with an illegal gun or a gunman will far outweigh the benefit claimed from having an illegal gun. I am giving advance notice to the country, to communities like this community which I represent, because I know you are going to have people saying a circumstances and give them a bligh. I'm giving advance notice. So those three public facing, the new legislation, the new incentivized reward program, and our increased operational tactics, all those elements taken together will change the risk-benefit structure around illegal guns. Presently, the risk of owning an illegal gun is relatively low compared to the benefit that the gunman perceives that he gets. With the new policies, laws and capabilities coming into effect, the risk of being involved in any way with an illegal gun or a gunman will far outweigh the benefit claimed from having an illegal gun. I am giving advance notice to the country, to communities like this community which I represent, because I know you are going to have people saying a circumstances and give them a blight. I'm giving advance notice.
following the shocking gruesome early morning double murder of husband and wife Cecile and Phyllis Ramsey, allegedly by their 24-year-old son at their Christian Meadows home in Portmore St. Catherine on Friday. Residents are appealing to Jamaicans to not ignore clear signs of mental illness. Sonia Morgan, president of the Christian Meadows Citizens Association, told the news team that the couple's son, brilliant and promising, had always been sheltered and very restricted by his devoted Christian parents. Morgan and other residents shared that in recent months, they had noticed a concerning shift in his behavior and speech, but never dreamt it would one day lead to the brutal death of the Ramsey couple. Cecile Ramsey was a painter and lay preacher, while his wife, Phyllis, was the acting vice principal at St. Andrew Preparatory School. The son at one point worked at St. Andrew Preparatory School as a teacher's assistant. According to Morgan, the accused who lived with his mother and father at their home had big dreams of becoming a football coach and was pursuing a degree at G.C. Foster College in St. Catherine where he was a well-rounded student who was running for president of a club at the institution. Morgan, a very close relative of the family, said she noticed that the young man had stopped going to college and instead was spending most of his time with a pack of aggressive dogs and a parrot he owns. The news team was told that in recent times, he had been involved in loud arguments with his parents and residents assumed he was rebelling. The observations, however, did not strike them as alarming until yesterday when residents believed he snapped. A bloody veranda was evidence of the horrifying incident. After allegedly killing both parents, he drove away a vehicle belonging to his mother before he crashed it in the Phoenix Park, done beholden area of Portmore. According to a police report, about 4 a.m., cops responded to a call from resident there, who reportedly found the motor vehicle abandoned. Upon searching the car, blood was seen inside the checks were made at the Ramsey's home, and both of them were found with stab wounds. They were taken to hospital and pronounced dead.